Amen. I think I'll turn it off. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God one more time to partake Amen. of his word Amen. and take of his spirit. Uh, we thank God for allowing us to make it out uh, this morning, uh, even with the weather being the way it is. As we get ready and prepare for the word of God, uh, there's a few things that I want to add to the list. First of all, we give kudos to the Cincinnati Buccaneers uh, group uh, who's been so diligently with our caring and sharing ministry on Saturday coming out and helping us uh, do the things that we were uh, mandated by God to do. Amen. And so we give credence to them for their participation in uh, helping us. But we also um, want to thank all of the church members who came and invited their friends to come and get the uh, food baskets. The second thing I want to do, uh, I want to bring up a few names uh, that I want to add to our prayer list, and we're going to pray uh, just before the word of God. Uh, Keisha Harris asked to have prayer. I know Big had a niece uh, whose family, we're praying for the Green family and the Straight Horn family. We're praying for Terry James, who's in Jewish Hospital. We're praying for all those who have issues with COVID, uh, who either lost somebody or is going through that battle of COVID. Uh, we pray for the First Lady as she convalesced home uh, with her illness. We also miss and pray for uh, Sister Paulette um, and our Brother James. Uh, we pray for all those who are less fortunate than we are, and we pray for you and I. Uh, our word of the day comes from uh, the uh, 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Uh, we've already read it to your hearing, the first five or six verses. I'm going to start at verse 6, and then we're going to pray, and we're going to move on. Verse 6 uh, in the uh, first uh, Corinthians 10th chapter says, uh, Now these things uh, were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Verse 7 says, Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither uh, let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day uh, three and twenty thousand. That's 20, uh, 23,000. Uh, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them as an example, and they are written in our ammunition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he falls. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But our God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear. Let us bow. Father God, we come now in the matchless name of Jesus, thanking you for who you are and what you are in our lives. We thank you, God, that you brought us to the house one more time to give you praise and honor. Father God, we'd be remiss uh, not to uh, pray for those uh, who are asking for prayer around others that are calling God. Don't pass by those names that were mentioned. For whatever reason, God, they don't have to give all the information because we recognize that you are God who knows all about us. And so, Father God, even sometimes when we don't want to speak it to other folks, God, you already know. You know our sickness and you know our situations. You know the things that cause us to rise and to fall, God. And then we ask, Lord, that you would bless them and right where they need to be blessed. Touch them, God, where they need to be touched. Strengthen them where they need strength, Father yeah, God. But whatever their situation, Lord, we ask you to see about them. We don't have to sing you nowhere because of your I'm not presence, God, but while you're there, we ask you to look upon our sick and shut in, listen, look upon those, Father God, who don't know you for the pardon of their sins, look upon those who are calling out your name, Father God, as I said in Sunday school, that was a window, Father God, that you give uh, all of us that we might speak your word and lift man's soul, God, so we ask you to bless those, Father God, on all, not just our list, but all the sick and shut in list, all the prayer lists all over the country, God, bless those church doors that are open and those that are virtual, Lord, that your word might be heard and manifested yeah, throughout yeah. this land. Let 
the things on earth, amen, be commanded by the things in heaven and use us as the uh, tools and the instruments to make the kingdom of God on earth to be grown and to expand. Lord, bless this word now. Uh, let it fall, Father God, from your lips to my lips and out of my mouth, God, that me and my hear, my voice will recognize that it is you who's doing the talking, God, that we might be made better, that we might be equipped for this week's uh, uh, assignment, God. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen, and thank God, amen. I want to talk just for a few minutes uh, from the idea of job lessons from our past. Lessons from our past. Paul writes this 10th chapter, and he talks about the things, amen, that happened in the past. Come on, uh, we all have history, and we all have a past, amen. Uh, some of our past, past may not be as great as others. Some of our past uh, show, amen, the struggles that we went through and the mischief that we got ourselves into. But guess what? There isn't a one of us who do not have history in something. I wish I had some help in here. And it's, it's good sometimes to take an honest look uh, at where you come from and the things that you've experienced in life, both good and both bad. Sometimes, amen, our bad seems to be the thing that linger, but it's sometimes good to just take a, a look at your history or where you come from. There's a, a, a saying that says those uh, who refuse to learn from our history are destined or doomed to repeat it. Why? Because uh, every history lesson has a lesson in there, not only for what they went through, but to correct some of the things that, that you go through now. I said both the things are both good and bad. Our good history is the successes that our family has, our, our family's name is attached to. I know uh, 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 my family was in waste collection and they were, you know, for a long time the only waste collectors in Cincinnati in a business. That's a good thing, amen. Sometimes your looks is indicative of your history. You know, uh, 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 your kindness may be indicative of your history. Uh, qualities that are known and traits that are known is good successes or things that ought to be looked at in your history. And you're not the only one, amen, in your tree that actually look good. If you go back and look at Aunt, uh, 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 Susan May and, and, and uh, May Deborah them, you'll find out that you weren't the only one with big biceps and you weren't the only one that was tall, amen. Somebody in your history, amen, was also in that same shape. But the good qualities, we go and sometimes we let them pass by. It's the bad stuff that we get named for. Come on. It's the bad stuff that we get named for. Our right. generational yeah. habits and our generational curses come from the bad stuff that went on in our history. You're not the only person, amen, that's had uh, 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 issues around substance abuse. If you go back and look at your history, you'll find that Uncle Huckabuck uh, had a drinking problem and all of your uncles had drinking problems and no wonder you don't have an issue with alcohol. You'll find out that drugs wasn't just invented in our generation. Drugs was invented a long time ago. You'll find out that Tammy Sue, amen, was dipping in the teal a long time ago and somebody else was doing this. Even when it comes to the, the new community of the uh, L. B, C, the, 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 the community of, of people who are, are, are not heterosexual, uh, the, the day community, let me put it that way. I, I'm, I'm, that's just grace. I'm giving you grace. I may not have it politically correct, but the gay community, amen, didn't just start up, amen, in the last 10 years. I mean, we had some closet folks back in the day, amen. We called them closet freaks, and we called them all kind of other names. But guess what? It didn't just start up uh, when you came on the scene. That's always been going on. There was some closet guys back in the day and some closet uh, uh, women back in the day, amen, but it wasn't as prevalent or out the way it is now, so Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. so all of this stuff have been there. Mm -hmm. But we only seem to accentuate the bad, the unfavorable issues, Come on, Bridget. the messed up character flaws, and the scars. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Those 
as I said, do not, who do not learn from their past is destined to repeat it. And in some of our issues, amen, we've taken uh, the, the dysfunction and the brokenness of our past and carried it on or extended it a little bit in our life. Now, let me give you just one that kind of bothers me the most. Now, I grew up, amen, in a time where, where we got a whoop. I, I don't mean we got a tap. We got a show enough whooping. Do you hear me? It, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even described as a whooping. It was a whooping. Because that's what they would do to you. I mean, they would yeah, tear yeah, the fur yeah. right off of your hide, amen, because they were trying, amen, to put something in you that you were rejecting. And so some of the ways of making it stick was to give you a few licks on your behind. Now Come we on, have young you. parents who yeah. grow up talking about, I ain't going to yeah. hit my child like my mother did, amen. And that rascal turn around, amen, as soon as he get old enough to cuss you, he cussing and fighting and hitting you. And you talking about you ain't going to do it. The Bible says, amen, to train. you want to train up a child, amen, you can't spread a rod. You've got to put something on him, but we come up with a new idea that say that if I want my child to respect me, I'm to give him everything that he asks for. Amen. And I'm not to teach him anything when it comes to the respect of, of you as who you are in the position that you're in. But that's one of those things that we further along. Amen. We further along uh, some of our crazy ideas just because we were grown enough to do it. But the Bible has always been clear on how we ought to rear our children and how things are supposed to go. And even some of our parents who were not Christians recognize there's some stuff that I did in my life that I wish I could uh, uh, change, but I got a chance, amen, for my children to make it. And so my mother said, look here, you know, if you don't do nothing else, you got to get at least beyond the 10th grade because that's as far as she went. And some of our parents were hard on us about education. We didn't understand it then because they wanted to see you make it further than what they had been. I wish I had amen. some help in here. So, and so, and so, and so, they were trying to correct some of the generational curses and some of the brokenness that were in their life, in our lives. And, so, and, and now, and then when you look back at it, you say, you know what, my mother was hard on me. When I missed the school bus, amen, she didn't care. She made you walk to school. And you better be there, amen, before they take attendance, because if she had to get in the cab to come to the school, amen. it was going to be an ugly scene. Amen. See, like then you go up there to school, and you whoop your kids right there on the spot. I remember my brother got a whooping right on the spot. My aunt came in, so I'm out of place, bang, she was knocking him out right there. Amen. But we don't do that no more because we think that's 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 cruel and unusual punishment. But I'm gonna tell you something. I was glad, amen, that by the time I was able to understand, I was glad that my mother treated me the way she did because it made a better person out of me. That's why we got this brokenness in our men, because they're trying to, amen, these women are caressing these kids and they're not letting them be what God designed them to be. And by the time they get to the warrior stage, amen, they want to be more like mama than they do real like daddy. Now I know that ain't that ain't good and somebody ain't gonna like that, but that's how it's becoming. Amen. These appear, amen, to change or alter our future and our children's future. We tend, amen, to cling to the bad, cling to the brokenness, and cling to our, our scars. Amen. When you weren't the first person, I meant to see uh, if you could grow up in a home with domestic violence, you weren't the first person to see your parents, amen, physically fight it out. But I, but no matter what you think about what happened, it has messed you up. It has altered you. It has changed you on the inside. If you grew up in a home where there was no father, guess what? A lot of us came out of it saying, I'm going to be there for that child, amen, regardless of what happened. Why? Because I didn't have a father in the home with me. But I wish we could not just say that, but do that because even though a lot of guys say that, they don't end up doing that. If they can't have a mama, they don't want the child. I wish I had some help with you. Well, let me deal with this idea of brokenness, and then I'm going to get in my seat. But the idea of brokenness, and you know I love the literal language. It's just there are two things I want to lift in this idea. One of them is being broke, and the other one is being broken. Uh, the word uh, broke comes from an old use of the word break, meaning to impoverish. And, and it connotes help it, it uh, connotes helplessness, disgraceful or embarrassment, having been fractured or damaged and no longer in one piece or in good working 
order. A person, it says, having give up all hope and despair. It's, it's more similar to the idea of action than it is the circumstance. Let me see if I can get you to understand that a person can be broken and, and have all the money they can ever want to have in their lives. A person can be broken and also be uh, without any resources or money. In other words, what I'm telling you is, it is not your circumstance, amen, that caused you to be broken or, or to be broke, rather. It is it's the actions that go because of your circumstance. So sometimes, amen, you can, you can have the necessity of what you need, but because of what you took in, the data that you take in, it messes you up. I, I don't know if I'm helping you here, but you know, as I told you, just like in a domestic violence situation, if you see that, and you may not think it bothers you, or ha it has an effect on you, but it changes how you appeal and how you deal with a woman. If some people uh, go over to the other side, and they think that the only way, amen, that a woman respects you is to put your hands on them, well, other people see that and go to the other side, and they say, I'll never put my hands on a woman. What I see my mother go through with my father, I'll never, ever do that. So it depends Amen. On the action and not the circumstances. Are you hearing me? And so to be broke, amen, uh, to be broke or to be broken, amen, is a cause of action and not a cause of circumstances. But we are not born broken, but we're born broke. I mean, that's it for a minute. Uh, uh, Psalms, it up, Psalms 51 up. and 5 says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in my sin did my mother uh, conceive me. Ecclesiastes 7 and 20 says, For there is not a uh, just man upon the earth uh, that doeth good and sinneth not. We are all, we have all been broken, and it's due to what we see, what we experience, and what we hear. But listen, look, and let me understand, let me help you to understand it. As I said earlier, there's some things in our generations of curses or in our family or in our DNA coming from our family that's caused us to be broken. It breaks us to the point where, amen, some things that's just not good to be around. If you got a family history where the last uh, four, five, six generations never made it at a high school, amen, it's the, the actions of how they have dealt with and appealed for that situation makes it a, a harder for you to get out of high school. Why? They have now uh, the actions and they have, amen, the, 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 the everything that goes with not graduating. They say, look, when you get to be a certain age, you go out and get a job and you began to work. School, in other words, in your house uh, after six generations is not as important as it is in the house of somebody who spent six generations making sure their kids got a higher education. Are you understanding what I'm saying? In my family, in my church, was the most important thing, amen, because it was in my grandmama's mama, and it was in my grandmama, and it was in my mother, so everything, amen, operated from the standpoint of Sunday after church. Uh, I don't care what you've done, amen, I don't care how it's done, everything was operated or coordinated around Sunday morning. I would come in on Sunday morning after being out all night getting ready for church. I may not have got the two hours worth of sleep, but guess what? Everything, amen, was predicated around, amen, Sunday morning worship. And from Thanksgiving, amen, think about it like this. Everything is predicated on grandmama's house or big mama's house. And everybody came to that house, amen, on Thanksgiving day to give thanks and to have a family meal. That's what I'm talking about. Everything, amen, for generations come, amen, into one unit or one place because that's how it's always been done. So anything that you want to change in your generational situations does not start two or three uh, generations ago. It sometimes has to start with you. It has to start with you. You say, look, man, um, I, I know a house is out there, and I want my kids to do better than I do. I see some parents right now, they two and three-year-olds know more about the rap game at two or three than I do at 60 years old. They, 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 they happy when their kids are able to use small cuss words in a rap song, amen, but he can't even say his ABCs. Uh, that, 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 that's forwarding uh, the idea, amen, that the educational system is not uh, uh, worth it and it's more about looking cool, amen, being accepted by your peers and doing those type of things than it is doing things that are godly. Our homes are messed up because the center of our home is no longer Christ Jesus. 
It's everything else for him. It's everything else except him. And we do more, yeah. amen, for the club scene and for the, for the, for the, uh, the that, that scene that's away from God, amen, than it is anything else. Glamour has become a big thing. Look on Facebook. You got women on there, amen, all showing their nails, showing their, their lipstick and showing their dress up and showing everything that's very seldom. Do you ever hear them talk about Christ, amen, or what God has done for them? Why? Because well, the well, center well. of their life and their heart, amen, God is nowhere in the picture. It was said uh, that, that some years, I, I think uh, back in the 60s, uh, out of the most such powerful leaders in the country that were preachers, all the way in the list of the top 50 most influential men, uh, influential blacks in America. There was a most, uh, there was most of them were preachers. Now, when you look at that list, they ain't a preacher on it no 